Right, I've decided to come on while this is fresh in my head. And you have to tolerate me being out of breath because I've just done a heavy weight training session. And I haven't eaten yet. But when I eat, this will drop out of my head. And it's only a, a minor point that I want to make. But I thought I'd better make it rather than um, just letting it disappear into the ether. Because um, I've wound myself into a state of complete confusion of late. And I don't think it's 100% necessary. Uh, my last upload were about, well, it wasn't an upload, it were a live stream. I was kind of coming out with ideas on camera. Um, <clears throat> my last upload were doing about uh, a, a new banquet chapter called Jesters, which I would like to make, but it's going to be very difficult to write it because it's mixed with things that actually happened and I'd need to reference all sorts of stuff that that I wrote about that didn't happen and stuff that actually did happen and I'm not sure if anyone's going to be able to follow it if I do make it um, so at the moment I'd rather just wait train because most people in these parts where I'm from just understand large arms and sleeve tattoos so there's no point in making book chapters um, so I'm going to try to get large arms but without the sleeve tattoos um, depending on if my back goes again because I've been out of training because of having a really bad back and a bad knee for a while but I think I was coming out in sympathy for Fish the singer from Marillion who apparently needs a operation on his right knee to go on stage. I don't know how much truth's in that. Because he could just be spinning a yarn. But there's no point going into that. Um, I became obsessed with the music of Marillion during, um, let's say, 2020. I won't go any further because I don't want a disclaimer at the bottom of this video talking about the mass narrative I'll just say 2020 and you'll probably know what I'm on about. Uh, the music of Marillion sort of got in my head and it's all a bit mental, the music. and Although very good. And I can't work out whether I love it or hate it or not at the moment because of the things that have happened. But in order to fully explain that, I'd have to make another banquet chapter, which I don't really think I've got the time for or the concentration span for in the environment that I'm currently in. So for the moment, it's just the weight training and making a database for Pro Evolution Soccer 93, 94, which is taking ages as well. So there's all sorts of projects on the back burner. Um, I know no one's going to watch this because YouTube don't recommend what I do to people because of the things I say. And that's just algorithmic dampening. I don't feel personally aggrieved by that because they're doing it to multiple people. Again, I won't go too far into it for fear of a disclaimer appearing at the bottom of the video and I say the word fear um, and it's not fear it's just I know that will happen I don't fear anything um, anyway album recommendation which leads on to the point about neurodivergency um, we live in the age of diagnosis I think I can say that without a disclaimer appearing at the bottom of the video leading you to Wikipedia or something, which is a joke. We live in the age of diagnosis. Um, everybody's got something in their head that is largely just a bad jaw or label. Um, I've managed to stay out of that world for 40 years now, but I'm sure they'd throw every label at me going just for whatever I'd say on the surface. But the album recommendation that I'll try and start with. I'm trying to give myself a structure for what I'm saying here. That's never easy. It's for an album called Buried Dreams by Clock DVA. Um, this came to me by YouTube recommendation, which can be a tool to send you absolutely insane or can be a tool to give you your next musical influence. See, with me, 
I'm always driven by a single musical influence, never my own, which I'd like to arrive at. There's always another person's music in my head that will be playing in my head while I'm walking around when I should really be thinking about my own music because it's the only thing that's going to propel me from the current plateau that I'm stuck on. Now I've got, I've got no social problems, no sort of destructive patterns of behavior that are going to stop me now. I just need a springboard. I've got a PA system. I've got some of the greatest songs written in the last 20 years, but they're just not produced to the point where anyone's going to think they're any good. Um, but I'm, I want to draw it back to the Clock DVA album because this is part, this is also a part of behavior modification that everything tries to do to. I mean, YouTube do it, Facebook does it, Twitter does it. They all do it. Um, some of them more nefarious than others. I, don't, I only use YouTube because it's easy to arrange my pattern of thought in playlists and novels and music and put it all as sort of a mind map of my own consciousness. Um, the Marillion albums, especially Script for a Jester's Tear, was playing in my head for maybe, <clears throat> let's say, two years. It got into my head during 2020. And I ended up going on this goose chase back to a certain place, which, to explain fully, I do need to do another banquet chapter. Um, but I got a recommendation for this album called Buried Dreams by Clock DVA. And the music on that seems to have the, the ability to rewire your mind and give you a complete immunity to nonsense. Now, their music was made early 90s or something. I don't know anything about them. And I prefer to keep it that way. I think I, I think all I know is that we're from Sheffield or something. But um, this album got recommended to me on the same day when I saw something about neurodivergency, which is why I've linked the two things in the title. Um... Because this album, Buried Dreams, I can only link you to it in the description. I don't want to do an album review and try wax lyrical about it because I'm not, I'm not a journalist. I'm a person who feels music to the point where it's nearly killing you when you're listening. And I haven't had this effect from many artists. When I was younger, I think the first act that did it to me was the Chameleons. And um, more recently, Marillion. But Marillion sort of does it in a way where it makes you feel like a lemming. And I don't think I need to expand on that point. Whereas the Clock DVA album gives me a feeling of complete immunity to everything. And it's just like pure driving intent. And I don't want to come on recommending the album. Like you get these people who've got hundreds of thousands of views just holding an album up and they do that and churn out album reviews and everything and it's all meaningless and they've got lumberjack shirts on and bloody spectacles and tweezled mustaches and it makes a mockery of music. And we do live in the age where true good music is now being mocked. I mean you walk around Manchester you've Ian Curtis is just a mental health poster. And that's tragic in itself. Um, but the Clock DVA album got recommended to me. Now, there's a certain reason I think it's been recommended to me. 
And I might as well go into that rather than going off on a tangent. Because I'm of a certain mentality that could snap after what's happened in the last three years in this country. I'm not afraid to admit that. My mentality could snap. One, because of my upbringing, which I don't go into very much on a public forum in order to give respect to the people who are part of it. But I'm quite certain if I was on Facebook, which I'm not, if I was on Twitter, which I'm not, and on YouTube, which I am, that there are certain recommendations and certain things you have your attention drawn to that tries to force you to snap in order that you don't do anything based on your own greatness, but you do it based on your base anger. And that anger is being tweaked by multiple things in the society, which I'm going to come to about neurodivergency. But the album Buried Dreams, when I read up on it, because I thought, why has YouTube recommended me this album? I like the album. It's given me a certain immunity. But why have they recommended it to me? So I, I looked on Wikipedia about the um, about the album, where it came from, when it was made. And and if you go on Wikipedia, maybe listen to the album first because it's a great album. In a way, I can't really describe. I won't try to, because to wax lyrical about music is often just cheap, and people, like music journalists, for example, are the worst sort of people. But I don't want to complain too much about people I dislike, or I'll be on the stream for 10 hours. And I want to make the point that's in the title. If you, yeah, listen to the album first, see what you think of it. Clock DVA, Buried Dreams. They've also got other good albums. Um, one of them's called, uh, what is it called? Can't remember off the top of my head because I'm on live stream and it affects my memory. Um, but if you listen to it first, let it seep into your head and then go on the wiki. Well, I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it says on Wikipedia. Alright, I'll just tell you what it says about the album, Buried Dreams by Clock DVA. When Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested for all the murders they'd done, the album Buried Dreams by Clock DVA was found in his CD player. So it was the last thing he'd been listening to before he went out and killed a lot of people. So I read that and thought, yeah, it's been recommended to me because they're trying to turn me into a nut job. Now, I'm far too sophisticated to go out committing any crime. I've had a lifetime of disillusionment, alienation, the whole, anything that could be thrown at this head has been thrown at it and I'm still relatively balanced. You could look into my eyes now and think I'm not balanced, but I'm completely in control of what I do. So any any algorithmic recommendation to make this brain snap is not going to work. Because if I can get over this back injury and that mystery knee injury that happened to me, do some weight training, tweak the music up, eventually go out with that PA and perform these songs, there will be no stopping me at all. Not through any gesturing that goes on. Because I get it all the time. I do a job subtitling videos where they do the same thing that YouTube does. They show you things that they know are going to annoy you. And it's through attritional irritation that you can be driven into complete anger. And that's all these platforms are being used for. They're not being used to recommend my music to someone who might like it. That doesn't work for me because they don't want me to succeed because I'm too strong as a human. Now, I don't know how long that's going to last. I'm going to be 40 this year. I could look like a 
I could look like a frog within five years, who knows? At the moment, I don't look like a frog. I've still got my intent, I've still got my strength, but they are trying to attritionally sap it away. Now, that brings me on to the point about neurodivergency. I was out trying to buy food, despite hyperinflation, which has been caused by our current Prime Minister, and he washes his hands of it and blames Ukrainian wheat, which is a joke in itself. But that day, I was listening to this album, Buried Dreams, thinking, right, I'll go out and buy myself some food. I'll use this clock DVA album to block out any Ed Sheeran that might be being played in the supermarket, because that music is made to taint your experience of food itself. That's just a fact. Every popular artist in this country is made to weaken your mind, weaken your balls, weaken your gut, weaken your arms, weaken everything. Weaken your intellect, weaken your, your ability to articulate yourself. Should be obvious to most people. It won't be obvious to most of the people subscribed to this channel because I've got a video that's gone over 100,000 views and that's where all my subscribers have come from. Um... <clears throat> It's just a documentary about 60s Britain, and I uploaded it as a joke, and it's the most popular thing on my channel. So all my subscribers have come from that, so they don't know where I'm coming from. They don't know what I'm trying to say. They don't even know I'm a songwriter or a, a writer of a obscure, nightmarish novel that they won't even be able to comprehend because it's not written in any sort of traditional narrative style. But, back to the point about neurodivergency, which I'll try to make. I went up to Morrison's that day with Buried Dreams on full blast in my ears. So I didn't have to hear any Ed Sheeran when I was trying to buy a steak. Because, personally, I don't want to listen to modern rubbish pop music when I'm trying to buy food. Especially with hyperinflation, it's like you're being mocked when you're trying to buy food. And it's not like that, it is that. That's what they're trying to do to us in this country. With rubbish music, expensive food, and all the other stuff that I won't go into because the stream will probably get cut off. Um, I need to be talking face to face to people about this rather than online because online just clamped down now. It's just clamped down and they just want you to consume rubbish and sit there and get fat and die, basically. But I went around Morrison's looking at the steaks looking at the vegetables, looking at the beer, looking at all this stuff with buried dreams on in my head. And went through the checkout with everything I bought. And then on the notice board, I noticed a sign that said, during the hours of 8 and 9 on a Tuesday morning, we will be having quiet periods for our neurodivergent customers where we will play no music for those people who want a peaceful shopping experience. Now, whoever made that notice, are they trying to tell me that I'm neurodivergent because I don't want to listen to Ed Sheeran when I'm buying a steak? Is that the message? We live in the age of diagnosis. I know that. Everybody's got a badge to wear that says I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. Mostly nonsensical. But you're telling me I'm in your shop spending money, spending double the money because of our current Prime Minister, who's just destroyed this country beyond recognition and he needs to be out. He needs to be more than out. But I won't go into that for fear of getting cut off. Who dares to call me neurodivergent because I don't want to listen to Ed Sheeran when I'm buying a steak? Who dares? Who wrote that message? Who got paid to who got paid to come up with the idea that you'd have a one hour a week on a Tuesday morning? One hour a week on a Tuesday morning where you can go in and not listen to Ed Sheeran when you're buying food? And in that notice, there is an admission by the supermarket. And I've, and I've said this is 
I said in the title this is going to be a minor point because it is a minor point in comparison with everything I actually want to talk about but face to face to the right people not just to morons hang on there's someone moving in the house Always a distraction for me. Always. It's like people are programmed to distract me. That's why I'm trying to hide away for six months. Until I can emerge with the right battle plan. And it will be a battle plan. It's not going to be flummoxing around, messing about and ending up homeless. and Messing around like I have done in the past. It needs to be a stringent battle plan once it happens. Right, someone has been paid to come up with the idea that we're going to have an hour's quiet period for our neurodivergent customers who can come in and buy a steak without listening to Ed Sheeran. In that notice, there is an admission that people hate listening to it when buying food. So why don't they just stop doing it? I now personally will not go into any public establishment in case I hear the shape of you being played. This runt does not deserve his position as a highly prominent songwriter. I've said this before. And you just get laughed at. People are, he's famous, therefore he's good. No, he's not good. He's gone for the middle ground in order that Young people and old people can agree on the existence of his music. It's that simple. Nobody loves it. And in that little admission from Morrison's of all supermarkets, they've said for our neurodivergent customers, we're going to have an hour's quiet period on a Tuesday where we don't play any rubbish music. I'll stop saying Ed Sheeran because he's not the only one guilty of it. Um, of making rubbish music that's di diluting the consciousness of this country is not the only one, but is probably, to my mind, one of the most prominent ones because when I started actually releasing this music out of my head through a computer and onto this YouTube channel and Spotify that no one listens to yet, and it's probably my own fault for not implementing it, but because of the things that are trained against me, to implement is not an easy thing. To implement is going to take a certain financial pot, which I do already have, but it's going to take more, and it's going to take cooperation from intelligent people, which I don't see any of. Intelligence is now being... I mean, the, there are intelligent people. I'm not saying everybody's thick, but these people are just being used to make apps, such as Airbnb, Booking.com, and these sorts of things are having massive damage on communities that I'm not even going to go into in this video because it's about an album it's about an album recommendation and a minor point about neurodivergency I mean you can see how animated I'm getting about this minor point just think if I came on talking about a major point which I'm not going to do because it, it is pointless at the moment in this society to say any truth in any animated way with this face and this accent. It's pointless. It really is. So I won't I won't go I won't go angry about major points unless if I can sort of do it in a way where people think it's funny and the channel blows up because of it. I don't know if you've seen the episode of Black Mirror where Daniel Carlui is holding a piece of glass to his neck. And he rants on at these X-Factor judges about how everything's wrong, this, that, and the other. And eventually he stood there like that with it, just on the jugular. And all of a sudden they start applauding him for his act. And he gets a show doing that constantly, ranting. 
I'd probably if 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 I could run and get exposure, maybe I would. Because I need I need exposure for this channel. I need exposure for my music. But I probably wouldn't rant on camera just for clicks because I'm better than that. <clears throat> but maybe some people see this as a really angry rant. But it's not. I'm perfectly calm and collected. Um, so that's the point about neurodivergency made. There is a force out there that wants to label me as neurodivergent because I don't want to listen to Ed Sheeran when I'm buying a stick. And I think all that requires is a period of silence after making that point in order for people to realise how much of a joke that is. So I'm going to end this short observation by saying, go listen to the Clock DVA album Buried Dreams. It's all over YouTube. And it might rewire your brain from all the modern garbage pop music that you'll hear in every establishment you go in. Because of that kind of thing, if I go into a Morrison's or an Asda, or I don't think Sainsbury's play loud music, because they're trying to maintain that aspirational middle class narrative that they've had going for many years. But if I go into any of these supermarkets, I have to go in in shades and with my own music on in my ears in order to even tolerate the food buying experience. And now I'm weight training, I'm going to need to buy more food, providing that my back doesn't snap. Because it snapped and it lasted for six or nine months. It could have been a slip disc or something. Which I think sort of passes itself out over time. You've just got to be patient with it. At the moment I'm sort of able to lift. Without without it suggesting itself. I've gone off on a tangent on that. This is my problem, tangents. Right, I think I'll try and say I don't go into supermarkets because of the terrible music that is permeating these times like a disease. It is so bad that it's, well, it's made to irritate. That's why it's been made. It is made to irritate because through fear, people operate in a, in a more capitalist, consumerist manner. But um, if I go to a self-scan checkout, because I can't often tolerate the people on the checkouts because they're sort of programmed to ask nonsensical questions, I'll go to a self-scan. But now, self-scans are filming you while you're buying. So I have to wear shades. And that makes me feel like an idiot in a supermarket wearing shades. But I have to do it because I don't want to look into my own eyes when I'm passing food through a, um, a self-scan. If I'm nicking stuff, keep an eye on me from somewhere. I don't mind being filmed from above. But I don't personally want to look into my own eyes when I'm buying food. And why has all this been implemented in shops? It's a horrible experience. It is absolutely horrible now in supermarkets, which is why I just go to Lidl or Aldi. Because the checkout workers can't be asked with you. So they're not sort of trained, really, to ask the irritating questions. And they don't play music in there. So that's what I do if and when I can be bothered going to supermarkets now. Um, as I said, it's a minor point. I've got more to say than this, but I'm not going to say it all on, on camera because I don't want this channel deplatforming because I could do something soon in music or in writing or a certain thing that captures people's minds where this channel could get popular based on the reasons I want it to get popular for. At the moment, it's only popular because I've got a viral documentary on the channel which is just about the Beatles and the Queen and the Prince and all this drudgery that 
people come to the country to look at and wave a little British flag and then piss off again. And it's all boring and it's all mind control and it's holding us back. It's devolution. But to call me neurodivergent because I don't want to listen to Ed Sheeran while buying a steak is not acceptable. I'm not the sort of person who's been diagnosed with something and I wear it as a badge and I go around expecting people to sort of create a safe space around that badge. That's not the sort of person you've created here. And I'm going to attempt to surround myself with intelligent people. I've been saying this for three years in order to create something that laughs in the face of everything that's been done in this country over the last three years. We obviously need the current government to topple. We need the mainstream media to topple. No license fees. Nobody watching the televisions. All that. But I don't want to get too revolutionary in a video where I've basically said I'm going to give you an album recommendation. So basically, go check out that album. Check it out. Check the album out. No, don't check it out. Listen to it. Let it permeate your mind. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Google's read it in three and a half minutes. That's pretty specific. I know. <laughs>